morning for the people in the world as well. Good morning. Today's topic says, Saul began to tell, your, tell about Jesus. We are all, including people in the world, will read in the book of Acts chapter 9, verses 19 to 26. This is the key verse right here. It means it's the important verse. Next. <laughs> As I said, we're all going to be reading in the Bible. In the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 19 22, we have three questions. Who is Saul? Who is this person? Saul. What was Saul's experience like on the road to Damascus? He met Jesus. Okay? Yes. And also, finally, what happened afterwards? So, some people know the story about Saul. Some people don't. Next. Okay, so let's go ahead and read from the book of Acts, of chapter 9, verse 19 and 22. And said, after he ate, he began to feel strong again. So, Saul stayed with the follower of Jesus in Damascus for a few days. Verse 20 said, Soon he began to go to the synagogue, which means, which means that it's like a place where it's seen worship in there, called the synagogue, and tell people about Jesus. He told the people, Jesus is the Son of God. All the people who heard Saul were amazed. They said, this is the same man who was in Jerusalem. Trying to destroy people who trust in Jesus. And that is why he has come here to arrest the followers of Jesus and take them back to the leading priest. Next. But Saul became more and more powerful in proving that Jesus is the Christ. This group were so strong that the Jews who lived in Damascus could not argue with him at all. That is very important key verse right there for us today to know what lesson will be about today. So next please. As we know the story, you know, who's Saul? <clears throat> it says, who is Saul? Really, his name became the Apostle Paul. As you can see, the says, the Apostle Paul. We focus on Saul right now. Okay? So, let's look at the letter A. It says, Saul was from the people of Israel and from the tribe of Benjamin. B. It says Saul was also a true Jew, same as his parents. Means mama and daddy were both Jews as well. And look and see, it says later Saul became Pharisee. Wow. That team, that kind of so smart. They know the law. They know the law. 
Next. <coughs> B. Look at this very carefully. Look at this right here. He was a native of Tarsus. Means that town is where it's in Greek. Now, letter E says he was born a Roman citizen. I find all of this about Saul's background in the book of Acts chapter 22, verses 28, if you want to read that. Now, look at F. It's interesting about Saul's background. His background was Jewish, Greek, and Roman. Three and one. This kind of, people try to figure out, how can it be? How can he have background in three? Maybe I'm related with Paul or Saul. Welcome, a visitor. Welcome. Come on in. Come on in. She, he belonged to the party of Pharisees, which meant that he knew Greek and Roman culture. It means that he had more than one language. Wow. So he knew Jewish language, he knew Greek language, he knew Roman language. Well, it means he's a bilingual person. That means he understands their culture, their, you know, language, like the Bible. He has taught Paul to be white and Jewish. He already knows the language culture. He also, when Saul visited Greek, he already knows their culture as well. He knows their language. Then, when he went to travel to Roman, he wrote he traveled to Rome, he knows their culture, he knows their language. So basically, he's bilingual. And basically, he knows more English. I know English, I know English culture here in the USA, but also I know ASL, black culture. I know black language, called black English. And also, I know deaf culture. I know deaf language. What? A F L. Yeah. Three cultures. So I just white salt. Some people say, how can he have more than one language? Really, you can. God made Saul as a gift to be salt. So, I mean, some of us, some of you have one language or one culture that's so, okay. Maybe you have more than that. Like what we have, Hispanic people. They are here with us, so they know our language. You know, they know the basics, so they're learning about our deaf culture and about our sign language too. But we have to help them and teach them about ASL. All right, next please. Now, the third question, or the second question. What was Saul's experience like on the road to Damascus? Let's look at it. It said, Saul experienced a sudden flash of light from heaven. Where did it come from? Heaven. B. What happened? He was riding on horse with his men, and then all of a sudden, he was trying to go out there trying to arrest many of the people that were Christians, those who followed Jesus Christ. But God Himself shone the light, and Saul couldn't. What happened to him? He fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, "Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me?" See. Jesus, whom you are persecuting. 
came to fly. He couldn't see. So, what happened? But he could hear the voice from heaven. He, Jesus said, he commanded him, told Saul, now, get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Okay. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up. Actually, I'm sorry. Went back to eight. Says they heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when his eyes opened, he could see nothing. I mean, he himself was blind. Back. Oh, I'm sorry. Or, go ahead. Go. Oh. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days, he was blind. He did not eat or drink anything. Why? He felt blind. He was discouraged. He was depressed. He did not feel like eating. He did not feel like drinking. So what happened afterwards? The Lord sent Ananias to go after, I'm sorry, Ananias to go and find, really, Lord told Ananias in a vision to come and meet Saul. So that way he can help Saul in the town. Okay. To go into and find Saul where he was praying at the house of Judah. He says, Oh Lord, I'm blind, I cannot see what. Imagine during that time, see, it's just right there, in a vision. Came, Ananias came. As you can see right there, the man's just standing up, putting his hand on Saul to help him, to help his eyes go back to sight, to restore, I mean, to get his eyes tied back. Ananias replied, Lord, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints, people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with full authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. Finally, Ananias went to the house of Judas and he placed his hands on Saul and Ananias said and I'm pretty sure that he was afraid of Saul his heart was pounding and the Lord commanded me I've got to do it so Ananias said to Saul brother Saul the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, he has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So that means Saul reached in. It blesses him. means that he gets his eyesight back full of confidence. Next. So what happened afterward? Immediately, like scale, fell from Saul's eyes. He 
got up, was baptized, he was led to the water and was baptized, and remember, same us, when we are baptized, we receive a free gift of the Holy Spirit. Saul did the same. After he was baptized, he was eating some food, and then he regained his strength. And then what happened? He felt what much better. Next, please. And from there, Saul, as you can see, that is Saul right there. He started preaching. Jesus changed Saul. He converted him. Oh, he wanted to kill so many people. But guess what? He became Paul. And Saul began to preach about Jesus in Damascus before he left Jerusalem. What? This man should have rescued people, but how? How did he change? He's preaching. How? In Damascus before he even left Jerusalem. What's the point of this lesson? What is the point? We will think when we do conclusion. Good next. Okay. The point of today's lesson were when Paul began to follow Jesus, he worked hard to convince the Jews that Gentiles were free. You know, in the Roman people were acceptable to God. Paul lived from the beginning all the way and started changing and means that life all types were changed and challenged by meeting people in Christ through him. While Paul met Christ, Paul changed. His name spread out all over the world. Made many people confused. Huh? That person changed? Oh man, that stock changed Paul. Before Paul tried to seek out all Christians in a restaurant and brought them back to Jerusalem. But guess what? God stopped him. We fall very powerful during Christ's time. He can affect the world. And he can do, even today. Look at number two. God did not waste any part of Paul. His background, like, like I said, Paul's background is from three different cultures. Jews, Greek, and Roman. God knows how to use Paul. Plus, changed him. Plus, used him. Wow. And he himself had a good training. He could have been a worse. He, he even admit he's the worst sinner, but it doesn't matter. God made him work for God. Starting to make Paul a preacher for his son, Jesus. Paul himself was a member of three cultures. His training, his precision, his mind, or even his weakness, you know, to let Paul what God wants. Paul obeyed him and followed him, and then he accepted him and baptized him. And then from now on, and last, the question for all of us, are you willing to let God do the same 